Hi, and welcome everybody to the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. I'm your host, Ross Benjamin. It is Monday, November the 13th, another week of six great podcasts coming at you. And I am joined, like every Monday, by Mr. Doug Upstone, my colleague, my friend, my trusted confidant when it comes to the world of sports betting. How are you, Mr. Upstone? I'm doing well, and uh, just, you know, I was this close on the show last week to going 2-0. and I think I came up a half point short with uh, when Texas didn't score in the fourth quarter against TCU. So, uh, you know, but, hey, those things happen. But otherwise, Alabama, easy winner there. So that that was good, Ross. And, uh, hey, you know, not, not too bad. We got some, uh, once again, we got another interesting week. I, I know you sent out the schedule. Got uh, some really interesting games to cover, and we have two that you and I will be talking about this week. Yeah, uh, on Thursday, uh, well, first of all, today we're going to be talking about Georgia and Tennessee, which Doug will be covering. I'll be looking at Louisville and Miami of Florida as the Louisville Cardinals continue to roll, number nine team in the country right now with a 9-1 record. Uh, Thursday, uh, I'll be back with Doug and Chip. will be joining us every Thursday now along with his Tuesday slot. Uh, and we'll be talking Washington, Oregon State, UCLA, USC, and Texas and Iowa State on Thursday. Some games there with national implications. And the other one, UCLA and USC, a uh, huge rivalry game. And then tomorrow morning, I'll be back with uh, Jesse and Sean. And we'll be talking college basketball. Three very good matchups with uh, Iowa, Creighton, Duke, and Michigan State, and Kentucky and Kansas. And then I'll be back tomorrow afternoon as well uh, talking NFL with uh, – Chip Cherimbus and Paul Bovey uh, will be looking at the uh, Chargers, Packers, Steelers, Browns, and Titans, Jaguars game. Now, I, you know, Doug, I, I know this is a college football segment, but I'm not really intrigued with the NFL card this week. Not really a lot of attractive matchups coming up. No, there, there really isn't. Well, here's what I have for you. All right. So we, we finally got to see what Michigan looks like. So what what would be your for college football playoffs? What would be your top four right now? Well, I mean, it's hard to leave any team out that hasn't lost yet, mm -hmm. uh, with the assumption the Michigan Ohio State loser is not going to make the playoffs. Uh, again, a lot is predicated. When I say that, it's predicated on Oregon winning out. So I would rather say, as as opposed to right now, Doug, my projection, what my projection would be, um, and I'm going to say it's going to be Michigan. I'm going to say it's going to be Florida State. I'm going to say it's going to be uh, Oregon because I love this. I think Oregon's the best team in the country. I said it last week, and nothing's changed my mind after what I saw last week as well. And uh, the one team, one game, I'm, and again, it's going to be between Alabama and Georgia for that final slot. And uh, I think uh, the Georgia Bulldogs uh, come out on top there. So, I it, again, my projection, it's just solely conjecture on my part, would be Georgia, Oregon, Florida State, and Michigan. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Michigan one uh, right now. And, well, and, and probably later, too. Uh, but Michigan one, Georgia two, Ohio State three and Florida State four. But I'm I only taking Florida State on the presumption they go on, you know, that they go undefeated yeah. okay, to get right. there. And I'm not sure that's that's a, a, a no longer a lock to happen with how now Louisville is playing. Now, Louisville did struggle. <laughs> excuse me, against uh, Virginia last Thursday. I think it was last Thursday. Uh, but w w it, no matter what, I, I think that Florida is the weakest team. And if Florida ends, Florida State ends up getting in there, I think that they'll be the number four seed and they'll be very similar situation, I think, to what how other number four seeds are to where they'll get probably beaten rather severely. I, I just see some weaknesses in this team, you know, as, as we go along. I mean, they're still winning. There's no question about that. And, you know, and they definitely belong among the top teams. But if Oregon gets in at number four, whether it be through Florida State or Ohio State losing, uh, that would be a loaded four-team field then, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, if Florida wins out, or excuse me, if Oregon wins out, it would be a shame, absolute shame, if uh, Oregon doesn't make the playoff. Because, uh, you know, you look at the one loss they had, it was the Washington game, which uh, 
that, I mean, by all accounts, they should have won that game. Some questionable decisions by the head coach going for it on fourth and one from his own 48 with, uh, what, less than four minutes to play. You know, following the analytics, and, you know, you keep following those analytics, guys, you're going to end up working in analytics with the people who are giving you that information. Uh, and then he missed a chip shot, not a chip shot, but a 38-yard field goal or thereabouts. Uh, on the final player regulation to lose to a Washington team that's undefeated right now. Um, Texas, you know, if you could make a case, Doug, for the 18 playoff, which is going to uh, consummate next year, I wish it was this year uh, because there's eight worthy candidates. There'll be eight worthy candidates, I should say. I mean, look, I mean, you look at the top eight teams in the country right now, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, uh, Washington, the top five have no losses right now. And then you got one loss teams in Oregon, Texas, Alabama, and Louisville. Um, so, and a couple pretty good two loss teams in there. Oregon State is a dangerous team, but uh, it isn't eight teams this year. It's four. And somebody, uh, as opposed to other years, I don't think this might be the toughest call uh, for the college football playoff committee that they've had since uh, this whole process has began. Yeah, well, it's it, one thing. I'm pretty sure, Ross, uh, I, I could be wrong, but I believe they're going to 12 teams next year for the playoffs uh, on that it, situation. I thought it was eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, not a, I'm not 100%, but I, I, I think I've seen it where it's going to be 12. But irregardless of that, the other thing that comes into play is what do you do if, let's just say, whether Ohio State or Michigan win, in okay, case so obviously someone will, What wonder if it's a three-point game either way. OK, and it's like, a you know, statistically and visually, yeah. everything about the game is really close. Do you drop them out just because they that they lost after being in there all year? And well, does Oregon jump them or does Washington stay ahead of potentially go ahead of Oregon because they beat them head to head on the presumption Washington uh, would win the Pac-12? Yeah, I think Washington has to win out to have any chance to be there. That's my opinion. Okay, number yeah. one. Number two, the Michigan-Ohio State loser could really cause a dilemma for the college football committee if indeed Michigan beats Ohio State because, uh, you know, right now they're putting a lot of weight into their two quality wins uh, they had at Notre Dame and uh, also the Penn State game. In Michigan, all year long, people have been talking about they haven't played the toughest schedule, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, the top teams up there. So I think it would – I mean, if Ohio State wins, I think clearly Michigan gets left out. That's my opinion. Um, but, you know, we have to see what shakes out with the other teams. I mean, if Washington ends up being a one-loss team, I'm taking Michigan as a one-loss team over them. Um if Oregon ends up losing, then that puts a whole different yeah. uh, light on everything. So there's a lot of interesting scenarios. But uh, again, you asked that question because you had a thought process going on with that. What's your thinking? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the bottom line is it's all to be um, all to be figured out. But not unlike the NCAA tournament, it's fun to, to you know, to talk about. It's fun to speculate. And, you know, it seems like the committee in the last several years has gotten better about how they rank the teams earlier. So yeah, you could maybe raise an eyebrow here or there, but there's not a lot to, you know, to go with. And, you know, several, well, especially when they first started, boy, there was, you know, a lot of teams that were, you know, like even that were ranked fourth that had no business even being in there. And ultimately they weren't, but it's just, it's just a, it's a different process and it's good. And I, like you, am looking forward to, you know, next year having a playoff system. Um, it, it obviously dilutes the regular season to a certain degree, but um, I don't think that's going to be as big a deal ultimately as what people think might think it's going to be, because uh, I think, you know, you watch the world series, you watch uh, the play NFL playoffs, you watch NCAA tournament uh, for the most part, you know, how, however, and whatever happens, one team ends up winning, and uh, that's what that's the one that's crowned champion. And uh, hey, they earned it. Yeah, you're right, Doug. I, I I stand corrected. It is a 12 team playoff next year, and I'm glad it's a 12 team. And I know some people are saying 12 teams is too much. Well, I mean, again, let's look at this year. I mean, look at who the 10 through 14 teams in the country are right now. You have uh, Oregon State at eight and two, Missouri eight and two, Penn State eight and two, 
Ole Miss at eight and two, and Oklahoma at eight and two. I mean, those are some pretty damn good teams. And uh, the way the format will work is one through four will get a bye in the first round, and uh, then they'll play five. We'll play 12, 6 11, uh, versus 11, 7 versus 10, and 8 versus 9. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's uh, it's been a long time coming. And, and uh, you look at what goes on at the uh, FCS level uh, where they have even a bigger playoff. I'm, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's a 2014 playoff in the FCS. Now, I'm not a proponent of that. Uh, but I am a proponent of this 12-team playoff, and I could see it eventually going to 16 teams before it's all said and done uh, in our lifetime, anyway, Doug. So yeah, well, and, and the other thing too, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little Dick Vitale on you here now is that I would like to see, and it's not gonna be every year, but you know, some of these teams maybe that have three losses from the power conferences. Hey, if if Liberty is undefeated. If James yeah. Madison is undefeated, why shouldn't they have a opportunity to go in as a 12 seed or even they maybe should. even 11? They should. Yeah, I mean, I mean they did their job. Know, yeah. Well, I mean, again, it's I, I think you're going to have to see teams like that and programs like that um, rather than playing it safe and hoping they go 12 and all like a James Madison Liberty may do this year and be the highest ranked ranked um group of six team is that right. what they're called group of six right yep. um mm -hmm. and, and get a new year's day bowl well maybe now um if you're in the sun belt if you're in uh one of the lower conferences even at the american athletic conference uh you, you may want to sc start scheduling um a, a stronger strength of schedule in your non-conference portion of your schedule so that would be how you could alleviate that because right now, I mean, who's a better team, LSU or Liberty? Come on. I mean, I, I know the Liberty's 11 and 0, but it, is there anybody they've beaten of substance? Uh, James Madison's a very impressive team. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they can, they are, they're hanging their head on the fact they beat Virginia early in the year. Virginia's a team that's coming on of late, but they're still a losing record team, yeah. you know? So yeah. I mean, well, other, I'm, I, go ahead, Doug. I'm go sorry. Ahead, no, go ahead. Finish your thought. Finish if your I'm thought. an AD at, at either one of those schools or any schools that has aspirations of contending for one of the 12 spots, uh, I have to say to myself, look, we got to start scheduling some better non-conference opponents. Um, and when I say that, I mean, you got to get into the power five and not, and not even into the power five, into power five, programs that are um that are uh, uh, noteworthy i mean in ohio state and michigan now having said that scheduling those types of opponents is another chore uh number one you're not going to get you're not going to get them to agree to a home and home uh you will in the consolation prizes you're going to get a hell of a payday so and i think maybe the ohio states and the michigans and the and the Georgias and the Alabamas will not be as reluctant to schedule those teams now because no longer will one or two losses crucify their season. You know what I'm saying? So right. uh, there, there's that distinct possibility. If you're Look, if you're in the SEC and you're a two-loss team, you're going to have a realistic shot of being in the, in the top 12 slots. I mean, right. uh, if you're in the Big Ten even, you're going to have a realistic opportunity uh, to get one of those top 12 slots, especially now with the expansion. Okay. Right. There's going to be no more Pac 12 as we know it. So, anyway, I didn't mean to cut you off, Doug. I just wanted to finish my thought. No, yeah, no, absolutely. And and to that, to, to, to your point, I think that's part of the dilemma for those schools. I mean, we see it every year. We see it in college basketball a lot, too, is that, you know, they don't want to play those teams because if they lose, Okay. I mean, even though, like you said, the repercussions might not be as strong, but there's still going to be repercussions, okay, for it. And that's going to be held against them if by chance they would happen to lose a game like that. So I think, you know, I mean, if you're a bubble team, right? Yeah. Uh, pardon me? 
especially if you're a bubble team. Oh, in right, basketball. right. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. even though that team might be one of the ones getting in, okay. Um, so th that's where the problem is. So their best bet is to you know try and get into let's just say the mid level of those conferences. Like you said, uh, I'm not sure that LSU would would uh, like an LSU team would schedule a Liberty team or anything like that even then. But if you get into that level, then you're you're definitely are upgrading your schedule as best you can from that standpoint. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't, because you you would think that that would be a better schedule in terms of strength of schedule than playing Northwestern State or Grambling, teams that they've played in the past uh, in the non-conference portion of schedule. I also think with this format now, you could ill afford, I mean, these, how could I put this? They have to do away with the F FBS versus FCS portions of the schedule. You know what I mean? You have to. I, I mean, and shame on you. If it's a tiebreaker and you played an FCS team and the other team played all FBS teams, it, yeah, I mean, that team should go. The team that played all FBS teams. Yeah. So I, I don't know why they would be reluctant to do that, especially with a 12-team playoff. Like I said, Doug, if you're a two-loss team, you still have an excellent opportunity. If you lose yeah. three games, you don't deserve it anyway, right? So right, I I, I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's going to be one of those things. Ultimately, I think at first the reluctance will still be there, but once you know we have maybe just say three or four years, maybe five years under the belt of seeing how this all plays out, then I think you know that reluctance might dissipate more, you know, than what we're talking about today. You know, I mean that you know, there's nothing worse for these schools is that they play an FCS team uh, like that or in, during the season, and they not only pay them, okay, but they also lose to them. I mean, yeah. that's the double whammy on that. So yeah. I think that's 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 the holdup there, and that's why you know you just don't see a lot. You know, like basketball is different because you it's earlier in the year. You know, it's 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 got a different. And people forget about that by the end of the year, but when you're just playing 12 games, you know, on a schedule. Uh, those things tend to be remembered more often and they're, they're just, they're more ingrained in people's minds. So, so we'll see no yeah. matter what, it's going to be great. And so we got a lot of stuff going on. So I'm ready. If you are to move right ahead into Tennessee and Georgia, if you want to go that direction. Yeah. Yes, we are. And uh, I would just say this in closing that uh, is it reluctance or is it pride? Um, so anyway, go right ahead. Georgia and Tennessee. I, I, I think I, I think you have them both right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from that standpoint. So um, Tennessee, okay, this past week uh, they they played Missouri and they got whipped. They have three losses on the season. So to make their season, the only thing that they can pretty much do at this point, because uh, I don't think ten wins, winning a bowl game is, is going to be uh, if, if they even could get there, is going to be much of a much of a deal. And upsetting Georgia would make their season, I think, at this point. Um, and the other thing that was found out uh, that Tennessee found out that maybe Georgia already knew that Missouri is arguably, and in my mind, it's not an argument, but Missouri's the third best team in the SEC this year. You know, from that, so here we go. Um, so how does Tennessee cover the spread and, put, and possibly pull the upset against Georgia? Tennessee last week gave up 256 yards rushing. OK, that was just the third time this season that they gave up more than 130 yards, uh, which dropped them to a still good number of number 26 in the country in rushing defense. Georgia comes in a, into this game a respectable 39th. And they're facing a Tennessee front seven that needs to, in my opinion, hold them to 125 yards or less. So to slow that running game down, to have things more under control. The, uh, if that has happens, and especially on early downs, then that allows the Tennessee front four and the blitzers from the linebacker position to incessantly try and put the pressure on quarterback Carson Beck. Now, Beck has been great, especially since they took the uh, leash off of him. It, he's in charge of the number seven passing offense in the country. And uh, you know what? If, if they can put the pressure on him okay, and force him to throw when he's not on schedule, that can change things. On offense, there's only one thing that matters about Tennessee. They, Joe Milton, their quarterback, has to have the game of his life to either cover the spread or uh, or to uh, beat them outright. Once Tennessee falls behind, to me, the game is over. All right. So now, as far as Georgia goes, Kirby Smart's team, they have the number four, number excuse me, number nineteen run defense in the country, and they and the same thing, they have to win first and second down. If they do that, 
that forces Milton to throw on third and long in, in situations. And even though he had his, a big arm, we have seen time and time again in his entire career that he's played, is that he's not a great passer, just a straight up, up, out of the pocket passer, and especially on long downs. Offensively, what I think what Georgia wants to do, I, I think they're going to come out to try and establish the pass first, go to the run second. And what they want to do there, they want to get tight end Brock Bowers ready to go, okay, their leading receiver, and Lance McConkey, who I think is also very good. If they establish them early, that allows them to uh, to not only pass, but that opens up the running game. Um, Missouri, uh, in their game against Tennessee, what they were able to do, so this looks like it's a weakness for uh, Tennessee against the run game, they ran outside the tackles in that game. And so what happens is they got the linemen blocked, and then, uh, with them doing that, the flow from the linebackers was too slow, and that led to a lot of long runs for Missouri in that game. So on this one, and if, if, if those, so between those two things, what's going to happen here? Well, I'm going to give the 10 points with Georgia. I think Georgia in this one, will, they'll be pressed in the first half by Tennessee, but I think ultimately the, the, the uh, strength, the speed, the, everything to do with Georgia will wear down, uh, will wear down the volunteers and they will suffer their first setback against the spread in nine games after playing a road game, Ross, Georgia, minus the 10 over Tennessee. Georgia minus the 10 over Tennessee. Another uh, aspect of why uh, Missouri was able to run the ball laterally in that contest with yeah. high effectiveness is the fact that the, uh, the Tennessee defensive ends did a terrible job of setting the edge. So yeah. that's another factor to take a look at. And uh, again, did Tennessee get caught looking ahead a little bit? They may have because they knew they don't have a chance. Uh, they didn't really have a realistic chance of the SEC title game, nor did they have a chance uh, for any kind of co uh, college football playoffs, maybe not even a major bowl. And their their major bowl is going to be this week against Georgia at home in front of 100,000-plus in Knoxville. And, uh, you know, here's the other thing, too with Georgia. They know they're playing Alabama now in the SEC title game. That's already, they're both locked in. They know that even if they lose, if they have wiggle room, okay? Next up is Georgia Tech. It would take a monumental feat by Georgia Tech to knock off Georgia. I think we could all agree with that. I think Georgia will be somewhere between a 24, 21 and 24 point favorite in that game, and rightfully so. Even if they were to get knocked off by Tennessee, if they go into the SEC title game and beat Alabama, they're still going to go to the college football playoff. So the sense of urgency, to me, uh, sides with Tennessee. Um, and I would have a small lean at this particular juncture. Again, folks, we're taping on Monday uh, for a Saturday game, Saturday games, plural. Um, and Doug likes, ten, Doug likes Georgia minus the 10, but my lean right now, is uh, I'm the under, home underdog in this spot for the reasons I just alluded to. Uh, but having said that, our official pick is going to be Doug's on uh, Georgia minus 10. Not that I confuse the living hell out of you. Doug's going to tell you uh, who he likes or who, what he has going on this week or what he could see uh, he has going on this week at Doc Sports and anything else he wants to share with you guys uh, that's noteworthy. Yes, uh, the uh, continue, Ross, to do an exceptional job on prop bets going across the board, uh, and, and that's a variety of sports. Now it's the NFL and with uh, the uh, NBA. So ha hitting 71% uh, most recently, had a nice two out, two out of three winners on Sunday in the NFL, so, so that was good. Went 1-1-1 one, one, one the NFL with the unfortunate uh, luck of getting a push with Detroit on that one who had a lead of a touchdown uh, on at least four occasions and still couldn't close the deal uh, there. So that was just, that's how that goes sometimes. Um, so we have that uh, NBA uh, have hit a couple of nice underdogs over the weekend. So this upcoming week, uh, again, the focus where uh, some of these other games during the week, looking for where I can find some winners for you. OK, so ma make that happen. And in college basketball, uh, one over or actually two overtime games uh, did not go my way. Uh, you've heard this familiar story before uh, from me. Uh, but I'm not you know, laughing. The, oh, I know. Oh, I, I believe you. If I'm anybody, not laughing at you. Uh, oh, I know you're not. No, 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 no. I just, I mean, it's, 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 it's my story of woe and uh, that's uh, got to own it. So 
but anyway, so college basketball uh, has, has got a number of games, got some interest, interesting games. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what you guys got to say on your show on Tuesday. So that'll be good. Some some of those exciting games on Tuesday. So that'll be good. And, al- and along with that, hockey continues to do very well, Ross. So excited for another week of sports betting for sure. You could find Doug at DocSports.com. They've been around for 53 years, folks. And longevity in this business speaks volumes. Uh, you don't last that long unless you're doing things right and the stable handicappers they put together there are excellent ones. But my favorite and yours, too, is Mr. Upstone. You can find him right there at DocSports.com. And don't forget, folks, Doug also puts out a daily video uh, Tuesday through Sunday uh, where he gives out a free pick. He, he has a, a segment at the end where he calls it his West, Guy, uh, West Coast Wise Guy segment in which he gives out a pick there, too, as well. Doug, you want to tell them a little bit about your video and also what you're doing with Scott Spreitzer? Yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll worry about Scott Spreitzer maybe on Thursday. We've got, a, got some time here okay. before then. But yeah, just uh, the videos have been doing extremely well, get a, a lot of views uh, from those. So happy with that. Uh, I think most recently, I want to say 75 and 46 on the picks that I've given out, okay, on free play videos. So that has uh, done really well. And if you happen to uh, check it out, I do have some thoughts on the Monday night game. So you can go to uh, go to Docs and look up my, look, see this picture, see this face. Click on that. You'll be able to see the video. It's right there. Okay. It's, it's real simple. And the West Coast Wise Guys, I talked about that last week. Uh, just a, a collection of d- different individuals in the sports betting industry, uh, you know, and, and a lot of different facets. And uh, I've been known these guys for years and years and years. And I give out a daily free pick with them as well. Yeah. And you could also find Doug's videos periodically over at our sponsor site, which is gamblersworld.com. You could also find me there at gamblersworld.net. It's there where I am and nine other great handicappers. And uh, what's good about our site, we got 10 quality guys. And the only reason I don't have Doug on that site is because he's contracted by Docs, and that's okay. But if he wasn't, he'd be with us. Having said all that, uh, we guarantee our picks there, which means all single game and multi-game daily packages and subscription plans of 30 days or fewer. If you don't win, you don't make a profit, we will credit your account back the exact amount that you paid for that specific package. So there you have it, folks. Uh, yesterday, if you if you were with me yesterday, it was a moot point uh, because I went 5-0 in the NFL yesterday, just a tremendous day. Uh, had a top play winner, which was the toughest of all of them to cash in, but I got it. Uh, I had a top play winner on the Washington Commanders plus the six. Uh, They took them right down to the wire, meaning Seattle losing by uh, three on a walk-off field goal. Um, But also my other four winners, I had Cleveland and Baltimore over 38. So much for the top uh, scoring defenses in uh, the NFL as they played a shootout uh, for all intents and purposes. Um, I also had, uh, let's see here. Uh, had uh, da, 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 da. we had the Vikings plus the points outright. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the Texans plus the points outright. We had the 49ers. And, you know, I caught a lot of flack uh, last week when I said Jacksonville is a fraud. Holy cow. You would have thought that I, I, I insulted Leonard Skinner. Everybody out of uh, <laughs> Jacksonville came chiming in and, and told me that it was, uh, you know, I, I was out of my mind, but, uh, again, I look at the yard per game differential, and, and it came, look, San Francisco blew them out. What could I tell you? I was right. You were wrong. Um, not always going to be that way, but most of the time I'm going to go out on a limb and say it will be when you disagree with me like that. So in any college football this weekend, five and three, and included my, ten, or my Big 12 game of the year on Central Florida, plus two and a half. A 45 to 3 blowout winner over Oklahoma State. So, folks, rolling right along. NFL since week two, 31 to 17, 65%. College football since September the 15th, 39 to 27. Uh, that's uh, somewhere around 59%. So, things are rolling and going well. My MBA uh, dating back to April 12th of last year. Uh, hitting at 64%. So no complaints, Doug. Everything's going well. But let me you know, let me just fill you in who I like in the Louisville and Miami game on Saturday. That game goes at noon Eastern time. And right now, Louisville's a one-point favorite. The total in that game is 47.5. Louisville, 9-1 and one 
and number nine in the country. And I'm still trying to figure out how that team lost to two and eight Pittsburgh, who, who actually lost to Syracuse last week. You know how hard it is to lose to Syracuse right now? They did it. So in any event, talk about that's damaging when you're a one loss team and you're in an ACC and if, if push comes to shove and they win out, uh, it's going to be awful difficult in my estimation for Louisville to make the playoff just because of that alone, even if they beat Florida State in, in the ACC championship game. Having said all that, um, you know, you know the way I think, Doug, you got a number nine team in the country at 10 and one. And they're just a one-point favorite. I know they're on the road, but they're just a one-point favorite at Miami of Florida, who's six and four right now and coming off an emotional loss in which they gave Florida State all they can handle last week and a seven-point loss on the road. Um, so, again, Miami is really uh, – they've lost four of their last six. They lost their last two. In those last six games, they've turned the ball over 13 times. That's been their enigma. Uh but I, I just got this feeling, um, again, uh, I, I don't think Louisville is good as their record indicates. I really don't. And I go back to that Pittsburgh game. Uh, to lose to a team the caliber of Pittsburgh and how, they're play, how they played this year is inexcusable. And uh, I, I just think that Miami has played a tougher schedule and it's going to pay dividends uh, in this spot. So, I'm going to have a small lean. Again, this isn't going to be something I probably won't use it on my um, on my premium side, but it's Monday, folks, and the games aren't till Saturday. So a lot could happen between now and then. But as of right now, I am going to take the Miami Hurricanes plus one at home over the Louisville Cardinals. And, you know, Doug, I forgot to mention to you, some guy mentioned that he goes, he liked me and you better when we are on SBR because you guys used to win all the time there. And since you came over here, you don't put half the effort in in, in any event. I, and why should I buy? He said, you know, these people, why should I buy? It's a two-headed coin with these people, see? Because if you lose your free picks, they'll tell you, why should I buy if you lose your free picks? If you win all your free picks, why should I buy? I'm winning all your free picks. Well, I'll tell you why you should buy. I went 5-0 and yesterday. You heard Doug's record. Uh, how did you do yesterday? That, that That's my question to you. In any, any event, Doug, your take on my game. Yes, on, 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 on Miami game is that uh, some of these things that you said I agree with, but but I'm going to agree with them for different reasons. And to your point, you, you, know, you said you had uh, Central Florida against Oklahoma State. Okay, and that same exact scenario applies to Pittsburgh and Louisville when they played because Louisville the week before had played and upset Notre Dame. So from that standpoint, that actually makes sense to me. And I did play uh, Pittsburgh that week uh, my, myself in that one. And you brought up something else that I think is important. Well, two things that are important is that, number one, all the turnovers that Miami is gener are creating themselves. And that I think is going to work against them in this game. I mean, they're just, they have shown a pattern now over six games. They're going to turn the ball over. Uh, Van Dyke is just, you know, he's, he's just not very good at playing at quarterback. As you mentioned, a emotional game that they're coming off here. Louisville, get, they got their wake up call last week against Virginia. They really probably should have lost that game last week, but they didn't. I think they're faster on both sides of the ball. I think they have better athletes and skill position players. So like you, Ross, I'm going to go the, I'm going to lean with Louisville in this one at, at just one point. I think that with what they have on the line, I think their ability of understanding how to win will be the difference in the game. There you go. And I so like our, it on the, I'm, Hey, it's the first video I think in a long time. We're both on opposite sides. So, I Hey, know, it gets people right, again, you, folks, talk about. you know, here's the thing. I mean, that's a good thing. Sometimes, you know, we're not trying to two sided game. If you've been watching us right along, there's uh, several more times than not where you, we agree with each other. Okay. But this yeah. is one of those cases, but our official picks, are Georgia minus 10, Miami of Florida plus the one uh, from Doug Upstone and Ross Benjamin. Again, you can find me at, our, at um, uh, gamblersworld.net. Uh, also, folks, if you have not subscribed to our great YouTube channel, that's the Gambler uh, Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. Boy, oh boy, between Gamblers World, I, it's, never mind. Uh, so if you have not subscribed yet, just click that subscribe button, and uh, it's absolutely free to do. And uh, take one step further 
If, if you haven't done so already as a subscriber, I would ask you to do this as well. Go into your YouTube settings, click on that alert notification bell for the Winter Circle Sports Bank channel, and you'll be notified immediately upon any of our podcasts going up on our great channel here. And that's six times a week, uh, Monday through Friday, twice on Tuesday. Doug, there's a like button right underneath. You, you got to pound it. Simple as that. Just hit hit that baby and you the, all these selections that we're giving out on this channel will come directly to you. That's the easy way to go. There you go. Hit that like button. Just a small token of your appreciation for the time, work, and effort we put into putting out a quality podcast. And first and foremost, above and beyond even the free picks that we want to win, uh, we uh, want to make you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. For Doug Upstone and Ross Benjamin, I'll be back tomorrow, two shows. Tomorrow morning, talking college basketball. Tomorrow afternoon, talking the NFL. Doug will be back with us on Thursday. More college football. Until then, folks, take care and God bless.